The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. 8.30 a.m. Thursday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. We're, gonna, we're going to get initial weekly jobless claims in a moment as we speak, waiting for that to hit the tape. Right now, you got markets in negative territory. Dow futures negative 76 points right now, trading at 26,979. S&P negative by nine points, trading at 3,007. We got the NASDAQ futures negative by 13 points, 11,078. Jumping over to commodities, gold contracts. How about it? New all-time highs just in the last about half hour. Those highs made in the 8.15 a.m. bar. Uh, it made in the last 15 minutes, 2,076. Gold just don't stop, folks. And as we speak, we're getting the weekly jobless claims. That number coming in at 1.186 million. Slightly under what the market was looking for in terms of 1.423. So we have an initial jobless claims, 1.186. I believe that is the 20th. 2020 20th consecutive week of a million plus jobs coming in, but under what they thought it could be. And this, of, uh, of course, ahead of tomorrow's big number, non farm payroll numbers. We'll be waiting for that number, especially after the private payrolls released on Wednesday. A little bit of a miss yesterday morning in terms of barely 100,000 plus jobs added for the private payrolls. We get weekly initial jobless claims 1.186 million. The market was looking for 1.423. Okay, with that in mind, there's gold. There's gold reacting to the market. And how about the S&Ps getting a little bit of a pop on that a weekly initial jobless claims number? Now, interesting, I was up early this morning saying, ah, the market looks great, right? We're hovering around 3320, pretty close to where we're at. And then just uh, 6 a.m., you trade down 20 points from 3320 in the S&Ps, excuse me, almost down within half a point of 3,000. And then look at this little acceleration we're getting on that jobs number, 3,312 and rising in the S&Ps right now. NASDAQ futures up five points. There's a little pop from 11,080 back to 11,100. As we saw, gold catching a pop as well. To the downside, though, on that jobs Number silver contract up a buck 27. How about a 28 handle on silver this morning? 28.54. Notes and bonds, a little bit of higher price and lower yield. We're climbing kind of right back up to where we were for the highs towards the end of the day on Tuesday. The 10 year right now up five ticks at 140.07. The 30 year up 15 ticks at 182.18. We're looking at a 10 year yield right now of 0.52. 5%. Okay, jumping around to what else we have going on in the markets. We'll jump back into it right away and we'll start things off. Stocks making the biggest moves. Big day of earnings. We get Uber after the bell along with many others already this morning. Hilton out with their numbers, losing 61 cents a share for the second quarter, wider than the 31 cents a share the market was looking for. Revenue below estimates as well, suffering from the pandemic-induced drop in travel demand. HLT, I believe, is their symbol. There's Hilton, a little bit of volatility from about 80 to 79 on their numbers. Restaurant brands, so I got this one up here. Restaurant brands, Burger King's parent revenue falls 25% as coronavirus weighs on sales. Quarterly revenue fell 25% to 1.05 billion. Tim Hortons same store sales plunged almost 30%. Burger King's fell 13.4. Popeye's reported soaring same store sales growth nearly 25% thanks to that chicken sandwich. Restaurant brands, what's that symbol? Arr. QSR, there's some volatility for you. Up to 60 on that initial pop. We just started the conference call at 8.15 a.m., uh, excuse me, 8.30 a.m. when we came on the air, and you're basically flat right now, 57.74. We're hovering right at around that area. All right, let's see if we got, uh, no, nah, that's just talking about general stuff in terms of stocks, getting a little bit of a pop and getting back into these earnings numbers. All right, let's see what else we got down here. Viacom, 
The media company reported quarterly profit of $1.25 a share, beating $0.95 cents a share estimate. Revenue came in above forecast. Viacom pointed to a rapid growth in its streaming business and said it's successfully managing through the effects of the pandemic. Is Roku down here? There it is. All right, we'll get to Roku because streaming, I wanted to get the Roku. Viacom, V-I-A-C. There's your volatility on Viacom from 26 up to 28, back to 27.01. And why not? Let's jump over to Roku. Some strong numbers for Roku, but talk about price for perfection. You initially spike pretty quickly to positive territory, but we give it up, Roku, off about $7 right now at 158.56 for Roku. The expected move in this stock yesterday, about $18, so not quite where you might have thought that that could go. But for some context of where Roku has been, there's some volatility, folks. We're going to open at about 160. So for some context, pretty much in the upper range of where we've been in Roku. And to get into what Roku says, okay, so they lost 35 cents a share. Let's get into some of the, because uh, they are streaming billions and billions of hours. Where's the numbers? Come on. Uh, let's see what we got here. They're not really giving you a good wrap-up. I read a couple things last night. So they lost 35 cents, smaller than the 50 they were market looking for. Revenue beat forecast, but the shares have come under pressure after the streaming video device maker said advertising industry uncertainty will persist through the third and fourth quarters. Yeah, one of the things they said, here we go, believe that it will be well into 2021 before TV ad investment recovers. Not surprising, right? You think about all the advertising that goes into travel, service, restaurants, vacations, airlines, Expedia, um, all of the above. Those just are not happening right now. But nonetheless, let's see. I mean, they're streaming billions and billions of hours. So Sales of Roku devices, which connect televisions, jumped 35% to $111 million. I might be uh, helping that bottom line. I bought some Rokus myself, but only in the last few weeks, so maybe those don't qualify for that quarter. Audience stuck at home, of course. Rev platform revenue, which includes ad sales, surged 46%, $244 million. The estimate was $239. Uh, nonetheless, ad revenue not coming back anytime soon this year, and the market reacting to that on Roku shares down a bit to about $158 this morning after spiking a little bit lower on their earnings last night. All right, jumping around to what else we have. Zynga, the video game maker, raised its full year booking forecast. Better than expected quarterly results. Digital game maker got a pandemic-related boost from increased engagement by players stuck at home during the pandemic. Not surprising, right? ZNGA, there's Zynga, up from under 10 to 1120 to 1054. We also got Match Group last night. I'm not sure that, uh, oh, okay, that was two nights ago. But still, quite the acceleration. Talk about uh, sitting uh, at home on your computer, whether it's Tinder, Match, online dating. Uh, a good time to be in that business. From 44, the depths of the lows of COVID. We're now sitting at about 120 on match after their pop on earnings yesterday. And that's after being at about 90 pre-COVID. All right, folks, we got the S&Ps negative by just two points now. Check out that little pop we're getting on that weekly jobless claims number from about 306 to 313, negative two points. We got the NASDAQ positive by eight, the Dow positive by eight as well. Gold contract up $17 at 2066. And let's check out the VIX. The VIX this morning, 2342. Stay tuned, folks. Come back, see what else we have on tap for Thursday trading. I'll be right back in three minutes. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P's climbing towards positive territory as we speak, now trading 33.15 off marginally. You get the NASDAQ up 14 points, the Dow up 30 points, jumping around to other stocks with action uh, today. Before we do that weekly jobless claims number, just a little bit more insight into what, the, uh, what came out at about 8.30 a.m. this morning. Continuing claims, or those who have collected benefits for two straight weeks, dropped by 844,000 to 16.1 million. It's quite a number, folks. Uh, the only encouraging thing you could see out of this, and maybe that's where the market charging higher, right? You were looking for about 1.4 million. The last two weeks, we actually saw an uptick in initial weekly jobless claims going on, not what the market wants to see. You gotta like that we actually see a dip in that number. Hopefully that continues, continuing claims. Hopefully we see that number decreasing. But man, oh man, where we are in this market compared to where we were prior, the record even this past week's improvement, the total remains well above the pre-pandemic record of 695,000. That's the record, folks, ever. And that goes all the way back to 1982. That record was set for the biggest number ever. And we are approaching now 20. We're not approaching. We're in the 20th straight week of a million plus jobs, 1.2 million. But the market, the market taking it and they're running with it. And you got the S&Ps now positive by one, NASDAQ positive by 18. Watch out, folks. We got 17 minutes left in the show. Who knows where will be by the time we wait for Mr. Larry Pezzamento coming on live at nine o'clock. Okay, what else we got going on? Quicken Loans. If you want to buy any of Dan Gilbert, is Dan Gilbert, what's his name? Come on, where are we? I believe it's Gilbert, right? Where are we? Dan Gilbert, there we go, perfect. If you want to buy any of his company, folks, he's selling it. He's selling it right now, and he's not getting the price that he wants to. Uh, be wary of this company. Now, I, full disclosure, I have a Quicken Loans mortgage on my own. Uh, they, they, there's a reason why he's one of the wealthiest people in the world. Talk about making the, the, the process streamlined, rocket, rocket mortgage, all that stuff. But folks, you, you don't, you don't offer your company out to the public at a time when you think there might be uh, a lot of future growth. You might offer that to the public at a time when you think you've peaked out. Correlate to that to the fact that we have record low mortgage rates. They're coming to the public with their shares, and the public's saying, ah, not so fast. They're going to start trading today under the symbol RKT for Rocket. They wanted to sell 150 million shares 
at $20 to $22. They ended up selling only 100 shares at $18. That's raising $1.8 billion, valuing the company at $36 billion. So what did they sell? 5% of the company, basically, is what they ended up pushing out, $1.8 billion. But be wary, folks. You know, Buying into a mortgage company at a time when almost everybody in the whole world is refinanced at these rates, maybe the market's picked up. There might be some, some, some value in that, but man, be aware of when a, a somebody who has made their wealth in this business says, you know what? I'm going to start selling pieces of this business to other people because I don't think maybe it might be the best time to be buying that business. Nonetheless, interesting stuff, especially with where we have the bond market right now at 0.53%, that 10-year yield going on. In terms of markets overseas, you had the Nikkei last night down about 4 tenths percent, Shanghai positive by 2 tenths percent. Europe, you get the DAX down about 7 tenths percent. The FTSE down 1.7 percent. CAC Carol down 1.2 percent. Tough action going on in Europe. Uh, Bank of England holds their rates steady. The story over there, going to be an interesting open today with this market charging higher positive data, but we got to wait for the non-farm payrolls tomorrow, about 24 hours from right now. That'll be interesting to see what we have going on. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping back to the stocks with earnings this morning. Uh, Contour Brands, the maker of Lee and Wrangler Jeans, they're trading higher this morning. Quarterly loss of 22 cents a share. Compared, the market was looking for a loss of 40 cents. Revenue above estimates as well. Saint was in good financial position despite the short-term negative impact of the pandemic. Folks, that's what you want to hear if you're a long-term investor in any of these stocks, okay? Because we will return to a form of norm normalcy, whether it's in 6, 12 months, 18 months, 2 years, whatever it is, we will return to that normalcy. And when companies like, I mean, strong brands, Lee, Wrangler Jeans, right, they're positioned well to come out of this KT, what a KTB, Contour Brand, whoops, KTB. And there you see the pop from about 21, 26. We're up to between 22 and 23. Their bid ask for some context on where this company has been. There's a little volatility from 43 down to 13. And the highs in early June were all the way back to about 24. So we're not even going to be up to there yet, but 22 to 23 for the maker of Lee and Wrangler brands. All right, what else we got going on? So Live Nation, talk about a tough time to be in the business of selling concert tickets or sporting events. They lost 267 a share. The market was looking for only 208. The live event promoter also saw revenue well below estimates. Uh, yeah, pandemic virtually eliminating large gathering in all events, period. LYV for live is their symbol, LYV. This morning, pretty muted. We're gonna open a little bit lower. There's your drop to 46.13. We were trading at about 47.64 for Live Nation events. So Roku, we covered out with their numbers last night. Zynga, out with their numbers. Etsy, Etsy, quarterly profit of 75 cents a share, well above 39. The online marketplace's revenue also beat forecast. 19 million new and reactivated buyers. That is a big number, folks. E-T-S-Y. And talk about short-lived. They come out with the numbers, spike to 144, and the market says, ah, hold on, not so fast. We're actually lower this morning at 133.06 on Etsy and Costco. July comp sales increased 13.2%. Now, that's July, right? It's not, it's not March when things were really getting the beginning of things. Um, it's not April as we were in the thick of, you know, just a uh, – Grocery stores completely sold out of, of many of the staples, but July increased at 13%, more than twice what the uh, Wall Street was looking for. 75% jump in digital sales. Costco, there's your action on Costco from 340 to 345, and this stock has already had quite a run pre COVID. You were dealing with about 323. You never made it below 280. And then we're now making, uh, I believe that's going to be new all time highs. There you go. Talk about a stock, folks. From 2008, 2009, we're trading at $24. We're going to open at about 345 for Costco. All right. What else we got? We got Uber earnings after the bell today. We'll be watching that closely. Uber shares. Up marginally so far this morning, 33.46. You really started charging higher on Tuesday, up to the tune of almost 5%. You back it up Monday, quite a day as well, from almost $30 to closing out above 31. Uber will have a lot to answer for for themselves in terms of ride sharing, what's going on there. 
But of course, their their food delivery business, buying Postmates and how that plays into their business. You look at where we've been, the recent run from 13 all the way to as high as 38.78 when the market peaked out in early June. If you put on the Fibonacci number for this full rise, we've now backtracked to the 38 number twice, taking off a little rocket ship now above that 23.6 retracement. They'll have their numbers after the bell tonight, and we'll be watching Uber closely. I'm sure Lyft gonna be reacting as well. Lyft's been trading somewhat well this week as well. There you see the pop on Lyft, trading up to 31 from the 28th earlier this week. Stay tuned, folks. Come back, see what else we have on tap for earnings. Big day of earnings on Thursday. Big day of earnings tomorrow as well. And of course, we get those non-farm payrolls. We'll take a look at gold. Also, gold hanging tight right near 2070. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back in three minutes. Come on back. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006. And like many of you, was drawn in by Bam! as well as whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Markets in positive territory across the board right now. S&P is hanging on to gains up one point to 33.17. We got the Nasdaq up 17, and we got the Dow up 40 points. Gold contract, as I mentioned, holding steady at the 2,067 price point. You put this in some context, folks. Quite a run we've had on gold for those COVID lows of about 14.15 in the span of three days. 
You trade on March 20th at 1457. By the span of March 24th, you were at almost 1700. We're sitting at 1800 on July 17th, and we're sitting at 2070, holding strong in that gold contract. Quite a rocket ship uh, indeed. And we'll see where we end up, as it does not seem to be stopping. All right. What else we got going on? Some of the cannabis stocks. You have Kronos out with their numbers this morning. Disappointing a bit. We closed at about $7 yesterday. You're down 30 cents to about $6.70. They came out with a net loss, excuse me, a quarterly loss of 31 cents a share. Uh, they were looking for, let's see, 16 cents a share. And they had 9.88 million in sales this quarter. That's up from 7.6 million the same period last year, but the market was looking for about 12 million. Some of these cannabis, sto cannabis stocks, um, if you're thinking about long-term investing, folks, I've talked about it in my newsletter. There's some extreme value in the long-term for some of these stocks as cannabis legalization comes mainstream, whether it's in the US, uh, well, no, in the US, because these stocks really operating in Canada and uh, you get into the legal U.S. market, folks, and things are quite a different story. I mean, look how we're hanging. You really got to put them back on almost three-year weeklies to see the full pain that you've had from $1.50 to $25 to 7 on Kronos. Canopy growth from $6 to $60 to $19 uh, on, on Canopy. Just huge moves. Aurora Cannabis, another one people love to follow, up to $150, down to $10. Uh, Tilray, be careful, folks. You know, Put some stop losses in here. Um, the other way you can do it, Constellation Brands, strong company. They got a big investment in Canopy, but they've pulled back a bit over that last week as well. All right, folks, stay tuned. Larry Pesimento coming up live next. Markets in positive territory. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned for Larry. <laughs> 